Age contributes to everything in Alzheimer's disease. Um, impaired mitochondrial function. Uh, and this has been documented decades ago from looking at mitochondria in the brains of, of people with Alzheimer's compared to age match controls. There's a impaired ability of the mitochondria to generate ATP. And also more recently, there's evidence that um, there's an accumulation of dysfunctional mitochondria. There's this interesting mechanism whereby neurons and other cells uh, recognize and remove damaged and dysfunctional mitochondria. It's called mitophagy or mitophagy. And um, that system for removing dysfunctional mitochondria seems to be impaired in Alzheimer's disease. So anyway, you have impaired mitochondrial function, reduced ATP levels. ATP is critical for maintaining uh, or preventing actually hyperexcitability of neurons because the ATP runs the ion pumps that move sodium and calcium out of a neuron after the neuron has fired, after it's depolarized. So when there's an ATP deficit, that makes neurons prone to a hyperexcitability. Um, yeah, and, and also there's another mechanism that seems to be impaired in Alzheimer's and that's um, glutamate transport. So glutamates released at a synapse and it excites the, the downstream neuron, postsynaptic neuron. And so then after glutamate's released, it's normally removed quickly so that you know, there's not constant activation of the glutamate receptors and constant. So that uh, the glutamate transporters that remove glutamate from outside the cell also seem to be impaired. So there's like multiple things going on that seem to promote hyperexcitability. Now there's interest from this from a clinical standpoint. There have been a few initial clinical trials, uh, for example, a group at Hopkins, Michaela Gallagher, and uh, working with clinical people had evidence that uh, a drug that reduces hyperexcitability is beneficial in patients with mild cognitive impairment. 